Hi everyone, this is Frank DeMore with The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Today is February 21st, 2012. I'd like to welcome you to my uh, YouTube channel, but I'd also like to welcome you to go to my prophecy site, which you'll see BibleProphecyMan.com, and when you go to my site, you'll be able to click to the links to download my book, the documentary on Bible prophecy and current events. You'll be able to download this book, by the way, for free today. And also, you'll see all of the links there, so you'll be able to click to the links uh, that will bring you directly to the full story that I'm reporting on that connects uh, current events with Bible prophecy. And so what I'd like to do is because <clears throat> there's two prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet, and we're definitely seeing the road being paved to go there, I'm giving you updates to keep you current on what's happening I know that many of you are busy and you're not able to, uh, to keep on the watch as much as I am. So this is part of my ministry to help you keep informed about what's happening uh, in relation to Bible prophecy and current events. Because the Lord told us uh, to keep on the watch and he said this repeatedly through the New Testament. Now what I'm pointing to today again is Psalm 83, the war that's prophesied in Psalm 83. And again, the list, if you're brand new to the YouTube channel, the list, as you see, 1 through 10 are the nations from the Old Testament that will be uh, attacking Israel, and we believe that it's going to happen soon. And then, of course, to the right are the modern uh, names, modern day names for those people uh, in, the, uh, in the Psalm 83. And you'll see the Syria, the Palestinians, the Hamas, the the Egyptians, the uh, Saudi Arabia, and so forth. And then again, there's the Ezekiel 38 war map of the, uh, again, a second war that will take place after the Psalm 83 war. Uh, please forgive me if you are not new to my website. This, I know I'm repeating myself, but I do have new people coming and subscribing to my uh, YouTube channel just about every day now. So what I'd like to do is to try to bring you up to date what's happening as far as this road being developed to this next war. So let me go right to the site for the news. And again, when you're at when you go to my site, you'll be able to click the link just like that and you'll be able to read the news of what's taking place. Now of course in this article it says Israel to US challenge Iran to end nuclear program at once. Now, please keep in mind, you might want to take a little note of this because I didn't put this on there, but uh, the Lord told us in the Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, and Mark chapter 13, that you would hear wars and rumors of war, which we are hearing right now. And this news is really one of the, uh, the tidbits of this a prophecy that we are going to hear rumors of war. Now, we also know from Scripture that there's going to be war, and we know specific wars that are mentioned, for example, the Psalm 83 and also the Ezekiel chapter 38. So this is, again, all of this information is being tied in as warnings from the Lord. It says, Israel delivered strong worded message to the U.S. following comments advertising Israel not to attack Iran's nuclear facility, Defense Minister Ehud Barak. We are responsible for our own decisions concerning our future. Now this is, uh, the Israelis are preparing, I'll tell you that right now, they are preparing uh, in case that the UN, in case that the United States, the European Union, and all these other nations cannot get the, the Iranians to stop their uh, building or their quest for the nuclear bomb that they no doubt will use against Israel, then Israel is going to have to make an, a move to uh, secure their security. They know what's in stake. They know what Hitler said. They know what Hitler tried. And Ahmadinejad is very adamant. He said this many, many times. You'll see this in my book where I quote the documents uh, that in his statement saying that he wants to eliminate the Zionist nation or he wants to eliminate Israel. And of course, this is essentially what we see both in Psalm 83 and in the Ezekiel War. And obviously, when you read the text, you'll find out 
Israel is not defeated. It says Israel on Monday demanded that the U.S. challenge Iran to immediately put an end to its nuclear program while the U.S. for its part urged Israel to allow sanctions against Iran to do the job and cease planning for a military strike. Now anybody with common sense knows that this has been going on probably now four years and Ahmadinejad just re keeps resisting. He has no intention of stopping his quest for the nuclear bomb so something is going to take place. Will Israel strike Iran? Definitely are not going to rule that out because they're getting prepared for it. Will the United States take out Iran. Well, don't don't look for that anytime soon. The United States is a declining nation. They do not want to engage in another war. They got they're on their way now to a 16 trillion dollar debt and to get involved into another major war will definitely collapse the economy of the United States. There's just too much at stake. Plus, they know that if Israel uh, or the United States were to attack Iran, then uh, there would be a uh, no doubt probably to kick off a World War III. And keep in mind, Jesus did tell us that nation will come against nation. And uh, we know that these wars are coming. We don't know how fast they'll come, but we do know that they're, they're coming uh, quicker than we, we think they're coming because of all the signs. Now let me go back again to my website. Just take a second here. And uh, let's go back and review some of the other articles that are coming out to show you the wars are coming. It says U.S. officials believe Iran sanctions will fail, making military action likely. Again, this is another one of the wars, rumors of wars. And you see here that, uh, as I said, anybody in their right mind who knows the background of Ahmadinejad and his hatred towards Israel knows that he's going to do whatever he can to uh, try to get Israel destroyed, including using the satellite nations of Syria, Lebanon, and of course the Palestinians. It says officials in key parts of the Obama administration are increasingly convinced that sanctions will not deter the Tehran from pursuing its nuclear program and believe that the U.S. will be left with no option but to launch an attack on Iran or watch Israel do so. Now I really believe, I may be wrong, I mean, but I really believe that the United States will not do that knowing the results or knowing the conflict that it's going to cost and uh, obviously it could ignite a major war, World War III, we know that Russia will immediately step in because they've already warned that any attack on Iran, they would see that as a provocation against their nation's security, the nation of Russia. So, but Israel will have no, uh, no option in this case. Israel will have a, uh, their defense capabilities. They, they know that if they did not make a move that something would take place and uh, they're going to have to make a move either sooner or later. Now you can take other links and you can pursue your other information. Nuclear weapons states should get off their uh, soapboxes about Iran. Iran threatens to ex you know, extend the oil embargo, which is causing uh, economic havoc around the world. You probably noticed that the oil prices are going up again. And of course, this is going to have ramifications on the, uh, the economies around the world as the price of gas continues to go up. So in any case, we have here the, uh, the prospect of uh, a military intervention by Israel into Iran. Now it does, here it says the sweet spot for Israel actions identified as September or October. Now we know that uh, this is the month where we have entering in to the feast, uh, the Jewish festivals, and there's many of us who believe that it is a good possibility that it will be during this time or during the feast, the Jewish holidays, that the church will be raptured away. So when, they, when they're talking about making strikes during this month, that's when my ears pop up because we know that the the first four festivals 
uh, were fulfilled by the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and we know that there's probability is very very high uh, that the last fall festivals will be completed at the Lord's second coming or during that time it will be set off the prophecies will be set off uh, during the feast so something to really watch now let's go back and we'll connect some of these other prophecies now I did happen to watch uh, this weekend I was watching the military chief talking about this military uh, possibility and I want to bring this to your attention as well. It says the U.S. military chief cautions against Israeli attack on Iran. Again you have the uh, wars, rumors of war. It says the United States is stepping up its efforts to dissuade Israel from attacking Iran's nuclear facilities with a strong public warning by the U.S. military's most senior figure and the dispatch of two high-ranking officials to Jerusalem. General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that in a television interview that it was not prudent at this time, or at this point, to attack Iran. And a strike at this time would be destabilizing. Now, of course, it would immediately cause the Middle East to be stable uh, because we believe that any aggression Israeli aggression on Iran would obviously tick off their Arab brothers and I believe that when this happens that you might see the beginning of the Psalm 83 war as these nations would retaliate against Israel as I said many many times before and possibility ignite the Psalm war. It says, been in a comment likely to fuel speculation about Israel's military plans he added, I wouldn't suggest that we we persuaded them that our view is the correct view. The two countries were having a candid co collaborative conversation which was continuing, we said. In other words, what he really knows, and obviously he can't just go out and say it, is that Israel has to take care of their own destiny. They, Israel knows that uh, and does not want the same thing to happen that happened during World War II when Hitler Nobody did anything about Hitler and then seven million Jews were killed because nobody tried to stop Hitler until it was too late. Now Israel's in again the same predicament with Ahmadinejad who is set out for the quest of the destruction of the nation Israel. So Israel knows that there's a day coming where they're going to have to make a major decision either to take him out or to take out this nuclear program or to face another point in time in the near future where they will try to eliminate Israel. We know that this is going to be the case because when you read Psalm 83, in Psalm 83, and I please take the time to read it, it does say that these nations will come together to counsel together with themselves saying that they're going to essentially wipe out the nation Israel and that's what the attack is all about. So if Israel does go into Iran, uh, again one of the secondary scenarios I believe that will happen is Iran's satellite nations of which you know that Syria, the Palestinians, and uh, Lebanon and all of these uh, radical groups in these nations would then be unified to try to take out Israel. So many, many things to look for. Now, here's another one. IDF says ground invasion in Gaza, a matter of time. Now, I've warned previously many, many times that the Israel is going to be faced with the enemy that will not give up sending rockets into Israel to try to antagonate Israel to, again, make a massive move into the Gaza, which will then put Israel back in the in the headlines worldwide and to try to make Israel look bad in front of the rest of the world and this is essentially what they're doing they haven't stopped lobbing in these rockets it says it's only a matter of time before the IDF the Israeli Defense Force has to enter re-enter Gaza to control terror. IDF Chief Benny Kazans warns three years after the three-week operation 
caste-led counter-terrorist campaign. The IDF has carried out a consistent policy since several months after caste led it to re retaliate after almost every terrorist attack on the Israelis. The Hamas, of, of which is mentioned in the Psalms, Psalm 83, and other terrorist groups, both allies and rivals, have carried out hundreds of rocket missiles, mortar shells, and sniping attacks since the end of the lead cast or cast lead in January 2009. Israel has been operating on the basis of the Negev roulette policy, by which the military usually carries out a symbolic response to terrorist attacks that cause no physical injuries or serious property damage. When damage is more severe, so is the response, even though most of the terrorist attacks are launched without guidance systems that can pinpoint targets. The Gaza terrorists basically attack rural areas in the hopes of hitting human targets and know that if they hit a crowded urban center, there will likely or more likely of a large scale retaliation. And essentially, this they're not going to stop. They're going to keep this up until they get their wish. Now, what is their wish? It's going to be a full-on assault by all of the Arab brothers that are mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. And again, take a look at who they are because we're getting ready to see this war fulfilled. Now, here's another one that's showing you that I told you what was going to happen based on what we know from Scripture, and it is happening. Obviously, the rockets kept flying. You'll see that this is uh, 219, so 19, 20, two days. Uh, there was more attacks going on in it against Israel by these uh, people in the Gaza. IDF strikes terror targets in Gaza twice after terrorists fire a barrage of rockets at southern Israel. Southern Israel residents are spending the night at near shelters and protected spaces after the barrage of rockets fired from the Gaza over the weekend brought about several retaliations by the IDF. And I keep telling the people that if you watch the news, you're going to see one of these days you're going to wake up and you are definitely going to see that uh, the beginning of the Psalm 83 because Israel is going to have to make a major move to try to stop and to protect their people from all these rockets, these mortars and all these... Uh, incidents that they're, they're trying to kill the Israeli soldiers. Now here's an article that came out yesterday talking about the new Mideast war coming soon. Now it's a long article. It talks about what happened with uh, uh, Omar Gaddafi, how he was ousted and how new governments, Islamic governments, extremist governments have taken over in different areas like uh, for example in Lebanon and uh, we see this also happen in Egypt. Now, when you scroll down later in this article, that's what I'm going to be going for. You'll see that uh, there is there's information. They were warning that, you know, obviously the war is coming. It says, not for years. One of the nuclear uh, missiles um, operating the, the Tel Aviv and Jerusalem would be a global catastrophe. So we know that if one of these weapon systems hit, there's, there's going to be a major war. And I believe that then you will see the prophecy where the Lord said, nation will rise against nation. And there's no doubt in my mind, the Middle East would go up in flames. We would see major wars that many, many nations are going to be involved fighting each other. Israel would survive, but Iran would cease to exist. In other words, if if Israel were to get hit, Israel would fly over and demolish Iran. And obviously, if that happened, then the Russians would engage and uh, a lot of the nations that are allied with Iran would engage. Israel's fighter bombers would, with air-to-air -air refueling tankers have been an instant standby for months. Violating the airspace of other countries wouldn't even be a consideration. In other words, if Iran did anything, they launched anything against Israel, 
it would be over, friends. It would you what you would definitely see is the beginning of major prophecies being fulfilled that would lead to this war here, Psalm 83. Now, how do I know that for sure? Because Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.3 said, when they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction will come. And we know that a war will happen, the destruction will happen, where they're still calling for this peace and safety. Whereas the second war, this Ezekiel war takes place, when you read both Ezekiel 38 and 39, you'll see that this war takes place at a time where Israel is living what they consider now insecurity. And the only way that that can happen is if the, the neighboring nations who are looking for the destruction of Israel to try to recapture Jerusalem are taken out of the way. So that's how we know that Psalm 83 war will take place first. And then later, Russia, who was an ally of Iran, will bring in Iran, bring in Turkey, bring in uh, the new Islamic regime from Libya. And this is why this nation was changed in the, uh, in the government. Uh, and so that would bring on the second war here. Now, this is, there's a lot of news pointing to uh, Bible prophecy in the last days and these two major wars. Now, when this war takes place, and I believe that you're going to see it soon, I can't tell you the exact date. I never set dates, but the Lord told us to keep on the watch because if you know what to watch for, you will see it happen. Now, we know that God is the only real God who's able to give us the future specialized, specific events naming the countries, who's going to win, and also the direction they're going to be coming from. And when you see it happen, just remember what the Holy Spirit had showed you today. And at that point, I pray that you would receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, whoops, excuse me, personal Lord and Savior. Thank you.